Boys and girls, today I want to show you something very sexy. Just look at this. Can it get more beautiful than this? I don't think so. Today I'm gonna mix a great song by a fantastic band and I'm gonna send it through this wonderful analog bus processor. I'm gonna EQ it, I'm gonna compress it, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Let's have a little sexy time. You're forever here to stay. But let me tell you what this is all about. So I've been checking out this wonderful Tegela Audio Manufaktur Creme RC, and RC stands for Remote Control, in the last few days. And I gotta say I'm quite impressed because it's not only good looking, it also sounds great. It also sounds great, and I always like it if gear is not only sexy and good sounding, but also smart. And the RC part of this means this is a fully analog, but digitally remote controllable device. Really powerful and it's a best of both worlds kind of thing. And the Creme combines two, I would say, very classic analog processes that a lot of people use on their mix bus or in their mastering chain. I'm talking about the Pultec style passive EQ, that's the upper row here, and down here I'm talking about an SSL style VCA compressor. Two classics that we all know and love. And it's a pretty simple and straightforward device, because what you can do is you can boost the lows, you can, where is it, boost the highs, and you can compress your mix. That's all you can do. But that is what I would say 90% of all people do on all their mixes. Doesn't matter if you do metal or if you do reggae or anything in between. And that's what you could do with the creme, not more, not less. And as you might know, I've been using some Tegla stuff in the past. For example, their vocal leveler, which sounds great, but this thing, is doesn't sound transparent at all. It's highly colored and if you push it, you can even get into distortion territory. So a very colored sounding box with a lot of attitude. But from what they told me, the Creme is supposed to be the opposite of that. It is the cleanest device in the whole Tegela range. So it's intended to be used on the mix bus and as a mastering tool. The EQs only have five, where is it, here, have only five dB of gain, and also the compressor is quite gentle. So this whole tool is not intended to be used on tracks that need heavy processing, heavy lifting, a lot of bass, a lot of highs, and some, let's say, some extreme compression on drums or something like that. No, it's intended to sweeten your mix in a smooth way. And that's what we're gonna do today. I've chosen a great song from one of my favorite bands from the vintage rock band, The Alligator Wine, that I have produced and recorded and mixed. And uh, I'm about to master their second and last album. It's the last thing they will ever release. You should check out The Alligator Wine, great band, link below. Um, and this is a great song for testing this box because it needs a little sweetening. I want to start with the EQ and I want to start with the lows. I will show you what it can do. We've got the low boost here, it's boost only, and we got the different frequencies here. The band, the curve is like in between a shelving and a bell, and it sounds really musical. You will see even if I fully crank it, it will still sound really good. Let's check out the song, let's see what I can do. And this sounds really good. I gotta say that. This sounds really good. It just sounds natural in a way. It doesn't sound EQ'd. So even if I fully crank the band here, which is too much, I get it, 
don't know, it just still feels good. But let's find something reasonable. Let's do the same thing with the highs. Let's go up. So we got the frequency here and it goes from 10K to 24K, okay. And um, let's just fully boost it. Let's see what happens. And same thing again, right? Sounds very smooth, sounds very natural, just, just blends nicely with, with the music. Doesn't sound EQ'd. Let's just fine tune it, but I, I might even keep it like that. Yeah, I'm not trying to fool you. Of course, the level also goes up when you boost something and when you put more energy into a mix. And that's one of the things that I want to criticize. We've got a global output knob here, but it's a boost only. It's a makeup gain. So if I'm only using the EQ, it would be cooler to have like a zero position in the middle and then be able to either boost or cut the output signal. Not possible here. So that makes it a little harder to judge. But nevertheless, this sounds much better. This sounds super natural and smooth. And I'm quite impressed. It's so nice. It's not colored at all. So I gotta say, this unit doesn't have a tube output section like the real Pultec. You know, a passive EQ always needs an amp because you lose something like 25, 30 dB or even more, I don't know. So you need an amp after a passive EQ section. Uh, the original Pultec has a tube amp which colors the sound a lot more. This is way cleaner. And additionally, it doesn't have any input-output transformers. So it's not a color box. It's just a smooth and clean and natural sounding analog EQ. Okay, so this EQ sounds wonderful. I gotta say that, it sounds wonderful. It feels wonderful. It feels really expensive and nice, and it looks great. I'm really, really in love with it. Two things that I would like to see, uh, or that I would do to improve it. One thing is the cut and boost output knob. That would just help to, to make your EQ judgments, especially on the master bus. So I don't want to fool myself with just adding volume. So that's one thing that I would prefer to a simple makeup gain, like we have it now. The other thing is that the 5 dB are great for your mix bus. If you need more there, probably, you know, you should revisit your mix. 5 dB of boost, high and lows. But if you want to, say, shape a kick drum where you need a lot of EQ, where you need a lot of highs and a lot of lows, I just want more. So a little more I mean, would, have, would have helped me. The cool thing about this concept, though, is that you will you can't fuck it up. It's always gonna sound cool, even if you fully crank things. I've already fully cranked the highs on this one and it sounds fantastic. You heard me cranking the lows as well. So that's the cool thing about this. It's always gonna sound musical and nice, but it's a little more limited to mixing and mastering applications. So what about the compressor? It's a VCA compressor, the classic or Tegeler's version of the classic mix bus compression from SSL. The settings look 
SSL-ish, more or less, so I'm, I know what I'm doing. We also got a sidechain filter, a low cut on the sidechain with three different frequencies, 60, 120, or 200, like this. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use the 200 settings because I love having a low cut in my sidechain, both when I compress drum groups and when I compress the master bus. It just makes the compressor react a lot more smoothly and that's what you mostly want on a at least a master bus compression. But let's turn it off for now. We got threshold, attack, release. We got two different auto settings and you can hear it click. I hope you can hear that. So there's something happening inside the unit and we got the ratio. And if I don't know a compressor, the first thing I do is I will start with some extreme settings. So let's use the fastest attack time, a rather slow release. So we get some pumping, uh, bring the threshold all the way down and use the full um, ratio, 10 to one. So let's see how drastic that's gonna sound. This is the, the most extreme setting that we got here. And it still doesn't sound extreme, if you ask me. I can still hear some transients going through and the compression is still kind of smooth. Of course, way too extreme for a song like this, but you know what I mean. You can hear this is not an extreme 1176 type compressor or something. It actually sounds quite smooth for an SSL type compressor, if you ask me. Okay, but let's go back to some real life settings. So what I will do is I will s slow down the attack. I think I'm gonna go for a very fast release. That's what I usually try first on a on mixed bus compression. And then I will bring back the ratio and of course the threshold as well. Let's, let's see. even without the sidechain filter. But now let's activate the sidechain filter and I'm just gonna play with the settings a little more. Usually I either go for the fastest release setting or I go for an auto mode. I will try them both. Okay, interesting. So the, the auto release is a little more grabby and sounds a little more compressed, but also sounds a little more like a record, if you know what I mean. And the very fast release is a little more invisible. And uh, maybe I prefer that here, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. It also depends on the other parts of the song. Let's go to, to the ending of the song that is a little more extreme and let's see what's, what the compressor is doing there.
Oh, so nice. You've seen it. I've just added a little makeup gain here. So on the loudest parts, um, we have the same perceived volume. But I'm pretty sure that on the softer parts, the more quiet parts of the song, we will have a higher loudness now. Listen. So this brings the different parts of the songs a little more together. Lovely, lovely. Let's check the beginning again. Hey, my friend, only you and I. I am ready to save your soul. I'll caress you, suffocate you. I will take the pain away. I'll embrace you, isolate you. You forever. But let's quickly check out some other songs with these settings. Let's take one more song from the same album that is a little more straightforward. Is it sand or run or hide? Sweet, soft and low As a soldier in your row Countdown paralyzed Great again, here it's a little too much low end. So this is a very, very good and very smooth sounding VCA SSL type compressor, if you ask me. It has almost all the functions it needs. What I'm missing is a mix knob, you know. I would, I would love to mix, to blend the dry and the compressed signal. I don't really miss it, I gotta say that, because it sounds so smooth and, and, and so gentle that uh, when I first saw the unit, it was like, I was like, oh fuck, I'm gonna miss that. Turned out, you see it, it sounds great like this. We had almost five dB of compression. That's a lot for a mix like this, five dB of compression and a lot of EQ and it still sounds natural. So that's cool. I would still like to have that. There's another little button here that I forgot to mention. You can switch the order of the EQ and uh, the compressor. Yeah, but I can already hear you screaming. Can we hear some metal? Yeah, so I just mixed a very dirty sounding hardcore song from the Dutch hardcore band No Turning Back. You might remember there's an entire chorus about how we recorded that, that EP live and how we recorded the vocals handheld and how I did the mix and all of that. Uh, check out a link below. There's a link to the chorus. You can download the tracks, mix the song yourself, blah, blah, blah. Also, if you want to hear more about how I EQ and how I compress things, inside my Academy Cola Audio Cult, there are lots of courses. There's one entire one hour course only about compressing drums with a VCA type compressor. If you're interested in that, check out the links below to Cola Audio Cult, the best academy for rock and metal people if you want to learn how to record, mix and master heavy music. Okay, so let's check out that unmastered um, mix I've done for No Turning Back. And let's see if we can use this. Let's just start with some moderate settings.
it works great again, right? On this music, I usually either don't use a compressor at all on the mix bus or just very, very, very slightly because that music is already quite dense. But you see again, a touch of highs, a touch of lows just makes everything sound a little more hi-fi and nice. It's just a little, yeah, it's just a little more creamy, right? That's why it's called cream. <laughs> I almost forgot to talk about the RC, the remote control part of this unit, and that is so powerful and so smart, believe me. You know what, I already have a lot of analog gear that you cannot see right now. For example, I have a Paltec Type EQ over here, but I'm not using a lot of the analog gear in my mixes, and why is that? Not because it doesn't sound great. The problem is, in a studio like this, I'm working on a lot of different projects all the time, and I need to be able to recall the settings all the time, and that is problematic with analog gear. A unit like this, something like this, might change the way I work, because this unit here is recallable. What you need to do is you need to connect it to your either computer or to your router. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but it's pretty straightforward uh, by Ethernet and you got to install their plugin. You can see it here and you just put that plugin into your DAW session and then you can control the hardware unit from the DAW. You can automate it and your settings are saved with your session. Really cool. So it works in both directions. So you see if I touch something here, Look at this, motorized, and that makes it even more sexy, don't you think? Awesome. Yeah, but the cool part is you just open your session and the unit will automatically be recalled. So that is really cool. It's some kind of best of both worlds approach, fully analog signal path, but all the advantages of the digital world. All right, I think that's all for today. It inspired me. This unit inspired me because it sounds great, and because it's fun to use. It's just a lot of fun to touch those knobs. I mean, this is, I think in, in Europe, it's around 2K or something. So that's a lot of money. And uh, maybe it's not for everyone, but I don't know. If you're into analog hardware and might consider using something like this on your mix bus, uh, there's not a lot of competition. And from what I know, there's also Wes Audio from Poland. They do something like this. And there is Better Maker. Aren't they also somewhere from Eastern Europe? I think those are the only two companies that actually offer something like this. I don't think they have motorized podies though. Doesn't matter. But uh, I think that's the only competition they have. This Unix sounds fantastic. I haven't checked out any of the West Audio stuff and any of the Better Maker stuff. I might do in the future. Send me some stuff. But this is cool. Looks cool. Tegela are really cool people. I met them when I was in Berlin. And uh, I'm actually considering, uh, yeah, I might, I might want to keep this. It's sexy. I might want to have it here and use it on my mixes. Okay, I hope I could sp inspire you a little. I want you to check out this thing here. There's a link below to Tegela Audio. I want you to check out the nice guys from uh, The Alligator Wine. That's a, a band of two guys, and they don't use guitars, but play rock and roll. Really cool band. And I've produced and mixed all their all their uh, songs. Uh, check them out. They're about to fade away. This is the last thing they will release soon. It's the second album. After that, that's it. Uh, and finally, check out Cola Audio Cult, my academy, where you can learn a lot of cool shit. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Ah, wait a minute. We actually got some merch down there. You want some cool merch? I got some merch. You can order it below. It's cool. Bye-bye. Thank you.